Hi, my name's Keith Cooper and in this video I'm going to look at two metallic papers from Red River Paper in the States. Now, normally I test papers here in the UK, um, so I've had several people from the US ask me about papers they can get, as because some of the ones I look at aren't obviously available, and Red River Paper have kindly sent me a selection of some of their papers to have a look at. Now, these papers, this is for uh, yeah, viewers in the UK and Europe, there are versions of these papers widely available from lots of manufacturers. Um, but the specific papers I'm going to look here, two metallic papers, are uh, Red River Polar uh, Metallic, um, there is Polar Luster and Polar Gloss Metallic. They're 255 gram papers. They're RC type papers, so you can only print on one side. They've got a sort of plasticky side on the other. You, you absolutely cannot print, print double-sided on these. So really, what's metallic and what's the difference between the two papers? Um, you know, one, when you look at it, uh, his example here is a photograph taken of a black and white test print. Uh, one is a gloss paper and one is a luster paper. And you can see that in the reflection of the surface. But metallic, that's much more difficult to show. And one of the reasons I was curious to have a look at these papers is when I see metallic papers, my first question is, well, what am I going to use them for? Why would I use these metallic papers? Um, like all printing, it's a matter of taste. Uh, if you want to experiment with things like this, find you may have images that look absolutely superb on this paper. You may have images which look very awful or where the paper gets in the way of the image, which can happen sometimes. As I say, there's a luster and a gloss. Uh, these are from black and white tests. I did quite a bit of testing and I've created profiles that they colour version there which I'm going to show in a moment. Um, there's a profiling test chart from the gloss and there is the profiling test chart from the luster. And if you've not got light reflecting off them and um, I'm going to move them about a bit in the hope that it at least shows to some degree on the video here, there's very little difference between them. It's purely about the surface. What gives the metallic look? Well, on other papers like this, I've looked at them from a microscope, and in the surface of the in the surface coating of the paper, there is a very finely distributed reflective medium, somewhat perhaps a mica or something like that, something which reflects light in a specific way which we tend to think as a metallic surface. Now, that is a strength of the paper and a weakness of the paper. Now, when I t profiled them, um, the results I get from it, and this is from a, a profiling chart when I measure these charts to make ICC profiles. Um, the printer I'm using on the way, uh, by the way for this is the Epson P5000. It's a pigment-based printer. Um, I'm using it because I happen to have quite a bit of ink in that one. Um, I know that these papers work very well on dye-based printers as well. And in some ways the colours are even more vibrant because you haven't got the depth of the uh, pigments on it. So I know that some shots on these sorts of papers, colourful shots, and I've, if you look at some of my Pro 200 videos, you'll see I've looked at similar types of paper. They're very impressive with the right sort of picture. So there we go. What about the characteristics of the paper? Well, it's quite dull. It's not a bright paper. Now, looking at the response curve here, there may be a tiny bit of optical brightener in them, but it's very low level. I won't say these are OBA free, but if there is any in it, it's at a very low level. And there's certainly not enough that it would cause any concern. What you're more likely to notice is that they're just not very bright white papers because of the surface. They have almost a greyish look to them. And that's the metallic look. And that makes a difference with the types of images you might want to show. Now, they're both almost identical when profiled to the extent that when I looked at the gamut volume of each, and this is something I just use for indicative purposes. Uh, if the shapes, when I look at these um, in the profiling software, if they look the same, then you can be pretty sure that effectively the papers are going to behave the same way in how they handle colour. And that's how I've set this up for this. Now, let's have a look at an actual image for it. Now, these are some of the gloss puns, and here's the, here's the paper. Now, 
This is the one that I showed earlier. Now I'm printing directly from Photoshop here using the profile I've created. It's a shot, a commercial shot I did. Uh, we have a metallic surface. We have bright colors from the gummy bears there. And uh, this was for a shot for the makers of the chips that are in the front there. And it was printed as a big poster for a trade show. Now, in looking at this, this is the preview in Photoshop. You could print perfectly well from Lightroom, or you could use, since I'm using an Epson printer here, I could use the Epson print layout software. It would work just fine. I don't need to do anything special for printing. It's just an ordinary paper. Think of these as papers which just look a bit different. Different in the way that some images just have a bit more punch with them. Some images just don't look right. Now, for this one here, I've got some very strong colours in this image and certainly uh, I tested a uh, look at uh, any uh, out of gamut colours in the image and it shows me that some of these reds here are beyond what this particular printer paper combination can manage. Uh, likewise some of the very bright reds on the other side of the image here, uh, they're out of gamut. It's important to remember out of gamut doesn't mean they can't be printed. It just means you may not see the variation you're expecting. So what you can see on the screen may not be there on the actual print. This is a, an instance where I will check using soft proofing to give me an idea of how colors are going to work. And for a relatively dull paper like this, I may well use soft proofing and increase the colors a little bit, the saturation of colors of other colors to get a bit more colorfulness out of the picture. Now that one works nicely and because it's a metal surface, the metallic look of the paper really gives it a nice look and it looks quite metallic. So that's that one there. Well, I've got a black and white shot here and this is printed on the luster. Now they don't make much difference, but this architectural shot, the fact that I'm getting a reflection in the picture of light off the side of the building, and it's a cladding with a slightly metallic look. This particular architectural image suits this sort of paper. And I say there's not a great deal of difference between the luster and the gloss, but that's a luster printing with black and white. Now I've printed black and white. I've used the ABW black and white print mode uh, because it tends to give better black and white results. So there's a black and white shot there. And in fact, when I was doing some testing, I always do a check. That's what these uh, test images are for, what the bar at the top of them is for. I did a bit of a check on it. And the linearity is absolutely spot on. This is using the ABW print mode. If I was printing this on Canon printer on the Pro 200, I would look at possibly using the profile, possibly using the black and white print mode. Um, it's always worth checking with that on uh, printers, uh, you know, dye-based printers. On pigment ink, I'll almost certainly use the black and white print mode. So on the Pro 300, I would use the black and white print mode. Um, but I have a nice black and white print. It's pretty linear. That means that the shadows aren't crunched, the highlights aren't blown out. It means the image I see on the screen is essentially the one I'm going to get out of the print. I don't need to do any tweaking for it. Now, I've got lots of stuff in there about how to use these test images and how to check your black and white printing for stuff. But this prints out of the box just works for black and white. Don't need a profile for it. I'm just using the ABW print mode. So for the glossy one here, I'm using Epson Premium Glossy Photo Paper setting. For the luster, I'm using Epson Premium Luster and it just works. That means it's pretty well matched to the printer. So no real problems there. Let's have a look at a few more images so you can try and give you a feel for what works and what may not work. Um, I say metallic one there, that one I rather like. It works very well. Um, also, anything where you've got where you've got lighting, you've got bright lighting, you've got bright strong colours here from the sky, that lighting, the look of the lights from the cars going past really does seem to work. It gives it a bit more depth, it gives it a bit more luminosity. It actually 
gives a feel for more like a transparency. Now, given how dark the paper is, other things, I'm getting nowhere near the dynamic range I'd get from a transparency image, a backlit image. But if you're printing bright, colorful images like this, then a paper like this really can make a difference. Another area where it makes is the solid blacks I'm getting on this picture. This is a small uh, succulent in the conservatory that I took a picture of a few years ago. The colours of the flowers are spot on there. Uh, the black have a nice depth to it. And because of the metallic paper style, it gives a bit more depth to the coloured parts. It handles these bright colours very well. Works nicely for that. So there's some coloured ones on the glossy paper. Uh, as for the luster paper, which would I choose? Well, it depends partly whether um, how I was lighting the print, because the difference in surface texture that you get between how the print looks with light directly on it and how it looks with light off it, that shot there, it's dependent as much on how you're looking at the print. So for this, as I said, architectural shot, that one works very well. The stonework in the picture here that was taken in Wells Cathedral. I don't really want metallic look to it, to stonework that's hundreds of years old. I don't really want that extra punch on it, but it depends what you want from your images, what you want them to have a look like. Now, here's an image that I know works well on this. This was taken at uh, the harbour in Amble, uh, unloading a trawler, just pulled up, unloading fish. Uh, just after sunset and the colors on this really jump out nicely. In fact, this one I've printed this this one borderless using the Pro 200 on a metallic paper and it really does look like a transparency. The reflectiveness of the light uh, off the surface of the paper surface gives it a real glow. Um, one more for use for the Right, is that picture of the moon. It's taken with a 1100mm mirror lens. Um, it is not the most sharp, the sharpest, most detailed view of the moon I've ever seen, um, but it looks quite impressive. And the paper surface underneath works for the subject. And I guess more than anything, you know, when I answer the question, what images do I want to use this paper with? I don't know, they tend to be brightly coloured or they tend to be high contrast for black and white where I want that extra bit of sharpness. Now, it's not a bright paper, so they're not physically, it's not a really brilliant white paper. Uh, but if I look at that moon picture, particularly if I look at the picture of the little flowers there, um, the lights in this picture here, all the metallic surface in that picture there. They're all images that I think benefit slightly from the paper. Now, it depends what you're going to do with your prints. Um, I would say that if you pick, if you want something that you're putting into a competition and you get the right image, using a paper like this will give you a nice extra bit of punch. But just beware that some people don't like it. Um, and if they happen to be the people who are calling themselves judges, then you may have a problem. So don't just headlong, just go into using it for your pictures. Choose the pictures carefully, which you think will work with this type of paper. Um, interesting choice. I said there are two of them for Red River, uh, Polar Metallics, and um, they're rather nice paper. Um, I'm still thinking, I'm not entirely certain which images. I found some images which I think work nicely with it, but as to whether you should, well, that's up to you. Um, get some samples, have a go, have a try, see what you think of it and see whether you like the look that it gives because it is quite distinctive. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, please do let me know. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. It's always appreciated. And um, thanks for watching.